Welcome, on behalf of the Texas Department Public Safety Crime Lab. Today we're going to talk about how to properly collect mobile devices as evidence. Let's look at these phones here. The first step is to determine if these devices are turned on. Check the device by tapping the screen, pressing the home button and volume buttons. No, they do not appear to be on. When we're checking the power state, we want to avoid the power button so we do not accidentally turn on the device. If the device does not appear to be on, then treat the device as any other piece of evidence and follow your agency's steps accordingly. However, if the device is on, we're going to follow some steps to try and isolate the device. We will demonstrate how to do so with an Apple and Android mobile phone. First, let's look at this iPhone that we now know is on. Let's try swiping on the top right or bottom of the screen to see if the control center displays. When the control center displays, we can now see there are some settings that can be selected or changed. Let's press the airplane icon to set the device in airplane mode. Airplane mode removes the ability for the device to interact with other devices through cellular signal. We also want to change the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings to the off setting to limit the device's activity. In a scenario where we are unable to see the control center by swiping on the top right or bottom of the screen, but are able to access the device, we can enable airplane mode and disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings by navigating to settings. If the device is recovered on and unlocked, we want to isolate the device, but also maintain the unlocked state. Before the screen auto locks, we want to determine whether the device is passcode protected by navigating to Settings, Touch ID and Passcode. If a prompt to enter a passcode displays, then navigate to Settings, Display and Brightness, Auto Lock, and select Never. Once you have made these selections, connect to a power source and take precautions to ensure the power button is not unintentionally pressed. This helps preserve the state of the device and prevents the device from entering a locked state. Now, let's follow these same steps for an Android device. Like before, if this device is off, do not power it on and treat it like you would any other evidence item. We see the device is on, and now we are going to try and change some of the same settings as we did with the Apple device. Let's swipe down from the top. Enable airplane mode and disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings if we can. If for some reason we are not able to use this method, we will try to access the settings. Swipe up and locate the settings app. Under the network and internet menu, enable airplane mode and disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in the settings menu. And under display, set the screen timeout to the longest possible duration. Please note, if never is not an option, the screen will have to be interacted with at some point during the duration selected, or it will enter the locked state. If you are unable to isolate the device, use a Faraday bag with a battery pack to ensure no signals can reach the mobile phone. Make sure if you're using any sort of external charger that the cord is inside the bag. If not, the cord can act like an antenna to send signals if left outside of the Faraday bag. Another option if you do not have a Faraday bag is to wrap the device and external charger in aluminum foil. This can work as an isolation method. Even if the device is in airplane mode, the use of a Faraday bag or foil can be used as a second layer of protection. The reason we want to add this extra layer of protection is because airplane mode does not necessarily disable the location services of a device. If the device cannot be in airplane mode, it is important to keep the battery pack within the Faraday bag or foil. The battery of the device will deplete quickly as it is continuously searching for signal. Isolating a device is very important for preserving evidence. If a mobile device is not isolated from cellular, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth signals, a remote wipe command could be sent, or an unintentional alteration could occur, such as getting a new text on the phone could overwrite data. 
If a locked device with an unknown passcode is kept on when submitted to the Texas DPS Crime Lab, it often allows the analysts to extract more data than if the device was powered off. If you are submitting a device that is live, visit the Texas Department of Public Safety Crime Lab website to view the customer handbook for further instructions. If you have any questions about any of these processes or collecting mobile devices, feel free to reach out to the Digital Multimedia section in the Austin Crime Lab.